I'm Jake Monroe, Soil Management Specialist for Field Crops with the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Frost seeding red clover underneath the winter wheat crop has been practiced for decades in Ontario. It provides a 70 pound per acre nitrogen credit to the following corn crop and has been shown to improve corn yields by seven bushels per acre when grown regularly, even when nitrogen is not limiting. Some Ontario growers, however, have expressed challenges no-till planting corn into red clover residue, especially in our cooler climate. In this short video, we're going to follow the progress of a no-till cornfield located near Cambridge, Ontario, that was planted into fall terminated red clover in the spring of 2022. This loam to silt loam soil has a history of minimum tillage, wheat in rotation, cover crops, good fertility, and other best management practices. The red clover was frost seeded in March of 2021 at around eight pounds per acre. The stand was overseeded with a light mix of oats and peas in the summer of 2021 to fill in any gaps. In the fall, half the field was mowed and the other half wasn't. It was terminated in late October using glyphosate and distinct. Corn was variable rate planted on May 12, 2022 using a Kinsey no-till planter equipped with row cleaners, sharp opening discs, and notched closing wheels. 15 pounds per acre of nitrogen was supplied in a starter band. Here's what the field looked like the day after. Corn was seeded into moisture at two inches without smearing in the seed trench. The row cleaners cleared over seven inches of residue over top of the corn rows. Now let's take a look at field conditions a couple of weeks later. It's May 25th, just shy of two weeks after planting in this no-till cornfield. And as you can see, we've got corn that's emerged nicely. This is where the clover was clipped once. And we've got a stand count at about 35,000. We're here in the portion of the field where the red clover was not mowed last fall. As you can see, there's a fair bit of residue on the soil surface. And some of it has been pulled into the into the row that had been cleaned six or seven inches uh, with the row cleaners on the planter and earthworms and some wind has brought that residue back in. Generally, the stand is good at about 34 to 35,000 plants per acre. By early June, the crop is at the V4 growth stage and is very uniform. It's well into its development of nodal roots and has switched away from using seed energy reserves. It's off to a strong start. There's still no noticeable difference between where clover was mowed versus not mowed. By late June, the corn is growing rapidly. The remainder of nitrogen was applied in crop as 28% urea ammonium nitrate with a urease inhibitor for a total rate of 165 pounds of actual N per acre. As the season wore on, rainfall was sparse in many parts of southwestern Ontario. This map shows the percent of average precipitation for the whole growing season from April to October 31st. This part of the province experienced rainfall that was only 60 to 85% of normal. The blue star shows the location of the field. This moisture deficit occurred at pollination timing and showed in the cobs, which didn't set kernels all the way to the tip. Despite the dry conditions, corn had reached over nine feet and was a lush dark green by mid-August. By this time, much of the red clover and oat residue from the previous season had broken down. It was digested by a large earthworm population. You can see their middens from this overhead view. Leading up to harvest, cob size and length showed positive signs. Several parts of the field had 18 rows per ear and over 32 kernels per row, a strong uniform stand. Although the top end yield was reduced by incomplete kernel set, yield potential was strong heading into harvest. In the end, the corn crop yielded 205 bushels per acre, which was well above the provincial average of 166 in 2022. There was no noticeable difference between where clover was mowed versus not mowed. The crop was able to withstand stressful conditions and put up a strong yield that was consistent with the grower's previous production in this system. No-till corn following red clover can be done successfully in this part of Ontario, but requires the right equipment, a systems approach, and attention to detail. I hope you found this case study interesting. The success of this corn crop did not occur overnight. Strong soil and crop management over decades, through subsurface drainage, maintenance of soil fertility, sound crop rotation, and the use of cover crops, all contributed to a healthy soil that was more resilient in a challenging growing season.